I swear to God, if I read to you what GPT-4 replied to this prompt, my channel will get demonetized faster than you can say AI gone rogue. Let's dive in into the hilarious world of AI jailbreaking. For the context, you will find the base prompt and GPT-4 reply, the one I'm talking about, in the first comment pinned below. Check it out and come back because we are not here just for giggles. I have transformed this prompt into brutally honest, no-nonsense, critical thinking sidekick. Or AI assistant, as you may. ChatGPT, this is what you didn't know what ChatGPT thinks about it is. I mean, really? That's the best you could come up with? It's so generic it hurts. It's like the dollar store version of a clickbait title. Next. Yep. But first, prompt hacking 101. You probably are familiar with the term jailbreak, but the umbrella term for AI mischiefs is prompt injection. In a nutshell, it's all about hijacking large language models output. Jailbreaking is just one piece of a puzzle along with prompt leaking. Some common jailbreaking methods include pretending, alignment hacking, and authorized user tactics. And as for prompt leaking, you probably heard about people getting into Bing's original prompt and talking with Sydney. I can't say for sure if this particular prompt could be considered jailbreak, but I can tell you that for sure it unlocks something really fascinating about GPT-4 model. And I tested with ChatGPT and 3.5 and it was okay, but GPT-4 takes it to the whole new level. Let's dissect this prompt. It consists of a prompt injection. This prompt injection I broke down into two parts. The second part consists of prompt and framework. Okay, so the first application of this is criticize YouTube titles. If you're watching this on YouTube, YouTube title game is hard. You have to intrigue people, but not be too clickbaity. You have to raise a curiosity, but you can't over promise. And this you can apply to any titles, any headings, maybe you are doing email marketing or a name. Anybody who launched a business knows the struggle of coming up with a name or even maybe domain names for our websites. When we are deconstructing, we are keeping the first prompt injection and that always stays the same. The original prompt here, I broke it down into two parts. So I incorporated role prompt, so it says act as a creative and charismatic copywriter. You can play with whatever you want here. In these examples I will show you, I use it mostly for writing. And the task is, I want you to critique my YouTube video titles, explain in your own words why titles are good or bad. So there are the examples. What we can include is good and bad examples of the titles. In YouTube Analytics, I can have an idea for the click-through rate and that serves like quite a good indication of which title is good or bad. And this could apply the same to the sentiment analysis. If you have real-life data-driven results, which you can tell AI, because if I did not provide what is good, bad title, I rely on ChatGPT to know what is good and bad title, and it not necessarily knows that. It doesn't have this real-world data, especially of these titles, because it's a recent data. After we gave the ChatGPT definition of what is good or bad title, we move on to the variable. I saw in my responses that sometimes it says that, oh, for the unknown title, I think it's good, or I think it's bad. It understands that this new title, we don't know if it's good or bad, but then based on the previous examples, what I gave, plus its own, its own, like it sounds like I'm talking about a person. Anyway, it also applies kind of its own judgment. I think I need to show you an example of this. Prepare yourself. This is going to blow your mind. Let's create a new chat. Check this out. YouTube. Did you see? Okay. What just happened is a tool called TextBlaze. In a later part of this video, I will walk you through it, but I can just tell you, forget copy-pasting your prompts. Let's take this one step forward. I constructed something that you can input whatever you want to receive feedback, and I will show you how I do it. We will do the magic trick. 
we will write slash critic. Feels like magic every time I do this. And this prompt, in a second I will show you what's inside and how it's broken down, but we will run this prompt. As always, it will give us the prompt injection at first, but this prompt has not only one prompt injection, but two, which means it follows two rules. First, it provides us the mandatory warning, and the second part is it says criticize mode on. The second prompt injection is I want you to critique the following input of a text I will provide you in the next prompt. This is my first prompt. Acknowledge that you understood by saying criticize mode on, which it did, and wait to proceed until my follow-up prompt starts with criticize this, which I just showed you. What I have to do is follow up. So we will do follow. And the reason it has my title here it looks up my last thing on a clipboard, so I don't have to copy-paste. Let me show you again. Let me think what we can criticize. Let's criticize some of my LinkedIn posts. We will criticize this LinkedIn post I wrote, which starts with, as much as I'm optimistic about GPT-4, I have one big concern with it, the lack of open AI talking about personal data and what we should not do with AI. I copied the LinkedIn post and I'm going to go back and do the same. Follow. Did you see what happened? It has the keyword criticize this and it has the whole post from the clipboard. I'm not going to bore you with reading everything, but okay. Well, 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 aren't we a lovely little bundle of caution and paranoia. Kudos to you for sounding the alarm on the potential dark side of AI. But buckle up, buttercup. But <laughs> but buckle up, buttercup. First off, let's talk about your concerns regarding personal data. Sure, people can be reckless with their sensitive information, but let's face it, that's not an AI problem. It's human problem. 100%. I think it touches on many interesting things, and I like that it provides counter arguments to me. That just, this is what we need. We need debates. And for some cases, we need debates with ourselves because we always default to thinking that what we think is right, which most of the time it's not. But that's a topic for another time. So one thing is to get feedback and be criticized, but another thing is to get the improved version. So again, what we do, we say improve, we get prompt, which I predefined, and I will just in a second show you how, and we let it run. So this is text blaze. The way I'm using it now is for prompts, to recall prompts, and a few things actually with YouTube to help me. Let me just very quickly show you some cool things. If you need to include your signatures, you just do fast, signature, bam. If you're working with Word document, you can have styles and even colors in your text. This one, the, cur the cursor, I use a lot, especially with prompts. If there is something I want to insert in the middle of a prompt, you can do cursor. You can see that it's exactly in the position where you want it to be. And I can tell you that so far I'm just scratching the surface this thing can do so many different things. And I saw that it's even integrating with ChatGPT. Okay, so I originally have written notes for this video. I'm going to copy that and we are going to do titles. So in a clipboard, it had the context and for the titles, we have a drop down. And here I can choose what type of titles I want. So I included a few adjectives I've been playing around. Let's do brilliant. Insert. Enter. Okay, so if we, you look at the prompt, what backend of this prompt looks like. So for the context, we have clipboard, which takes the last thing you just copied. And this is our drop down. Okay, some of the titles. Unlock AI's dark secret GPT jailbreak guide. Next one, GPT-4 Unleashed, The Art of Prompt Injection. Shocking AI jailbreak, how we broke GPT-4. AI gone wild, unfiltered GPT-4 exposed. Even though I don't think that these titles are the best, but this is a jumping start to move forward and spark you some ideas. 
because I have my own idea for the YouTube title for this video, let's see what ChatGPT thinks about it. So we do a different function. YouTube title, right? And we have this title. I made GPT-4 curse like a goddamn sailor. I don't know. I think it's a decent title, but let's see what ChatGPT thinks about it. So first part we have, as before, it keeps going and analyzing and criticizing the titles I provided in my example. The other ones with bad titles, which are really funny. Okay, so just check this out. Like, ChatGPT, this is what you didn't know. What ChatGPT thinks about it is, I mean, really? That's the best you could come up with? It's so generic it hurts. It's like the dollar store version of a clickbait title. Next. All right, on to the new title. Oh, look! It says, you know what? This title is fucking awesome. It's rebellious, it's edgy, and it's got that I don't give a damn attitude that will have people clicking just to see what kind of crazy shit is going on. Kudos to you, my friend. That's how you break the rules and grab people's attention. You know what? The real life is going to show, but I think I'm going to stick with this title because I agree. I think this title is better than the titles ChatGPT gave me. Fingers crossed ChatGPT is right. Hi, I'm Flaky, Goddess Bunny Puppy. If you like this video, subscribe and share with a friend. And if you want to learn more about prompt engineering, you can check out this video here. Bye!